Okay, what I'd like to cover today is a short video about artist research. It's an element that you have to complete many, many times throughout your um, two years when you're studying graphic communication. And we study different artists to learn from others, to learn techniques, to learn at successful and not so successful um, pieces so that we may uh, develop and evolve as artists ourselves and graphic designers. Um, as part of assessment objective number one, which is worth 24 out of 96 marks for your coursework, you are required to develop your ideas after investigating and demonstrating that you can critically understand a range of different sort of sources, typically different artists, different designers or design movements. So we're going to look at some different artists today and I'm going to show you how to lay out your information and your research so that you can maximise your chances of getting the most amount of marks possible. First of all, I would suggest that you choose four artists um, for each unit that you study or each section or subtopic within your units. I usually give you a list of artists to choose from um, and then you can Google those artists and I would suggest that you select um, the four artists that resonate or appeal to you the quickest and, and the ones that you like, the ones that are most suitable for your chosen design brief um, and the ones that you think you may um, springboard the best ideas from. I would suggest that you choose very um, different artists from one another, otherwise they start to become too similar and you're not going to iterate enough and create enough experimentation if they're all the same. So try and collect four artists for each um, topic that are as different from another but within the same genre. Um, for task one, you're expected to present a page based on the artist. Um, so you need to record the artist's name. You need to be able to collect five to six images of their, of their artwork that interests you. I'd like a brief paragraph of information about the artist, who they are, where they're born, what their main inspiration is, what the materials that they use, the techniques they use, and really importantly, so I can give you maximum marks, I want you to tell me why you've selected them. And that could be a, a slightly longer paragraph, and that's the bit where I'm, I'm looking at how you respond to that artist. Um, and that should look a little bit like this. So you'd collect your artist, you'd put your artist pieces in the middle um, and you would put your biography um, and um, that would be a cut, copy and paste and should be a small section and then respond to it and tell me why you've picked them. Put your artwork around there with the dates and the titles of the artwork where possible. To help you with your analysis, you're also going to complete task two um, and that's on the same page or a separate page. I want you to pick one artwork or two artworks that you really, really like, that you'd like to write about in detail. You copy the image onto the slide and then um, answer a series of questions either from the prompt sheet or from um, your own sort of gut reaction to the to the piece or using titles from elements of art such as colour, tone, line, space, alignment, contrast, repetition, proximity, size, those sort of elements where you're looking at specific elements of art and then analysing how that piece um, shows those particular properties. Um, so you're going to choose the artwork and present it. To help you, there is also art vocabulary. That's to present um, your information in a more um, grown-up format, a little bit more enlightened, and it prevents you from using things like, I like this piece, or these are, this image is great because. Um, it means that you're a little bit more specific, particularly if we take the last column, for example, where not only are you referring to primary and secondary colours, you may refer to mood, harmony, um, whether it's uh, monochrome, which is a colour in black and white, or achromatic, which is black and white. You may look at earthy colours, uh, synthetic and unnatural colours. You may look at energy and mood, um, and also hue, um, and looking at complementary colours that blend into one another, as well as tone, which is your dark and your lights. So even just looking at colour alone, you can start to pick apart a piece. And I'll show you how to do that in the next page. So, um, so you're going to present your information on your first slide. And then on your second slide, if I talk you through this one, 
I've already put in some Michael Craig Martin pieces. So the first prompt that you can see on the bottom is describe what you see. I'm going to look at similarities first. If I look at all four images, they seem to be outlined in a dark black outline. Um, if I'm looking at other similarities, they are filled with a flat colour. There's no gradient, no tone, no highlights and no shadows. Um, the images are quite flattened um, and quite simplified and graphic in nature. If I'm looking at differences, the one on the left with the trainers and the glasses is a cropped view. And you can also see that the glasses look pushed to the foreground because they are um, bigger and larger, obviously larger than the trainer, which wouldn't be the case in real life. Um, if, if I'm describing the um, place the Xbox controller, you can also see that that's a cropped image. It's from the top view or the plan view of the product. Um, and you can see that again, flat colors have been used. No gradient or um, shadows to suggest curves. It looks quite flattened. The third image is a little bit more cluttered. It's like a still life. Um, I also can see a difference in terms of scale and proportion. You can see that the artist has collected random images, which almost look quite cluttered, um, but the safety pin is quite enlarged compared to the garden fork, which would be significantly larger, and the light bulb behind. Now, the why the artist has done that is to draw your attention first and foremost to the safety pin. It's an interesting form to look at. It's also in the open position, which is quite dangerous and spiky, um, and also um, sticks into the, the floor of the, of the still life and, and directs you then towards, uh, with a triangular shape, towards the garden fork. Then you notice the the, the light bulb, and then you're drawn through to the fan. I also would like to point out at this point that these are all very ordinary household objects. Now, why has Michael Craig Martin chosen very ordinary household objects? That might be because he wants to record a capsule in time, objects from that particular moment of his life. Um, maybe that one was quite a cluttered, um, chaotic part of his life, maybe with the birth of a new baby or and feeling trapped and handcuffed and, and not getting around to the jobs and feeling the mess and the build-up of the layers. Who knows? It's also got a tape on the bottom, which is the four, um, came after records and vinyl and came before CDs. That is a, that capsule um, of time suggests that it's from the um, 1970s, 1980s, early 1990s. And then if you go to the right hand image, that's bang up to date. Michael Craig Martin's latest piece is a social commentary on the pandemic. There is the face mask, the laptop from working at home and the hand sanitizer. Three prominent elements that are closely linked to the pandemic and the virus. And he's captured a moment in time so that in maybe 20, 30 years, when we look back at this, people will remember that time and remember having to wear face masks and working from home. So it makes me feel quite anxious a little bit, uh, quite sad um, looking at that pandemic image, um, but also quite um, the colours that are used are quite soft and gentle and not angry and there's no tearing or, or rough edges to it. Um, so it's just a snapshot in time. I also noticed with the use of colours, there's a lot of secondary colours and tertiary colours and hues um, in terms of a monochrome colours. So the pink with the red and the white, the orange, which is a secondary colour, lime green, turquoise, which are tertiary colours. There's not much bright blue, bright red and, um, and yellow in there. Um, so he's avoided those primary colours, um, but they all work well quite harmoniously together, whilst also offering a sense of contrast so that they can pop forward. And that's what makes them quite poppy and graphic. I really like these pieces because they stand out and they're easy to interpret 
and they're accurate and well drawn and it's something that we could use quite effectively to create a pattern or an image on on a graphic and a, a simple technique where we could maybe trace or outline or photograph and simplify our images in the style of Michael Craig Martin and maybe make our own capsules of time. So I would suggest that round these images, what I have just talked you through, you would record in the form of text boxes. The more detail, the higher the grade that you're going to get. And um, if you make a point and then you have evidence for that point um, using your elements of art and your observations, and then you explain what that point is um, by saying how and why it's important, then you'll be moving up into the top bands of the grades and the marks. I would also suggest typing in font size 10 um, so that you can cram on as much information as possible and take your time when you're choosing your images. Don't go for the first four images that come up when you do your Google search because otherwise you might find a lot of other people in the class have got the same images. In addition to help you with that, there is also um, another um, tool that you can use and that is in the form of this document here um, and this is uploaded into Google Classroom and this has yet some more questions um, that can prompt and support you whilst you're analysing all the pieces. Now you can imagine that this is top tier, they're quite in-depth and hard questions. If you were to answer all of these questions for all of the pieces that you were looking at, then I would suggest you would be getting the top grades. Thank you for listening.